Welcome to the Visionary Chronicles, a business strategy podcast where we provide insight to those looking for creative, executable strategies built around the latest disruptive ideas, innovative cultures, product creators, and marketing solutions. Welcome to the Visionary Chronicles. Today, we'd like to talk about a subject we had touched on in previous episodes, but I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into the word evolution and and how this applies to the brand and your brand and what you do as a company across all areas of your brand or company. And I say evolution, continue to evolve, not just exist. And I thought that would be a great term because I've been with and seen so many companies we worked with, either directly with myself, with brands, global brands, ones that you think are continually evolving, have done nothing wrong. But you look from the inside out and you see a lot of areas where brands and companies just don't evolve. And what I wanted to touch on was just not the evolution of the brand itself, Products is probably the first thing people point to. Hey, great products continue to evolve the marketing, the product, whatever it may be. But there are a lot of areas that need to evolve in order for you to successfully be this visionary generational brand. And so when we look at this evolution, I say continue to evolve, not just exist. So I looked at it again as to what evolution is. Is And I think a lot of times these terms help people in kind of defining what the next step and ensuring that you are evolving and that you do implement it correctly. And evolution is really a continual, what they say, dynamic development of something over time. What I love about that is continually and dynamically developing over time. And it just kind of gives you a singular definition of are you evolving or are you not evolving? If you stay static, you're existing. And of evolution is uh, from a simple to a more complex form is also evolution. So the opposite of that is, is clearly existing. And to, to exist means just staying static, fitting in with boundaries, the surroundings that you're in, whether you're a company, a person, or a leadership. And so when we look at this brand evolution, it's, a, it's an ongoing, long-term process and not one which remains static. And where you look at the company, again, the typical area that people look at with companies are going to be in the most tangible things, which are going to be marketing and product. And let's even in some instances say sales, obviously the evolutionary process of sales is how you interact, how you engage with your clients, how you sell them your product, all of those things, whether it be the evolution of marketing that adapts itself to selling tools is one thing. The sales process is another thing. We've seen this as we go through COVID people have had to quickly adapt and evolve to the market. And those that are prepared to adapt, to evolve, are the ones that have been successful. Those that exist are ones that are afraid of change and ones that haven't adapted, nor have they evolved over time. And as a result, they're effectively dying a slow death, which is very unfortunate because many of these companies have or are or were a great brand at some point in time. So to see them stay static and not being able to evolve with the times is very frustrating to see. But that's just how the brands feel they need to adapt. And all of this comes from the leadership of the company, the visionary or not a visionary, a follower versus a visionary. So when we look at this evolution, it really takes a lot of pieces and components. So you must not only evolve the product, But you should also evolve as we go through these times post COVID or during COVID is the customer engagement, the fulfillment of your product and the messaging behind the brand. And we've touched on these points, but when you see the evolution of a brand, they've evolved. They have the ability from a process perspective, from a product standpoint, from a messaging or marketing perspective to change. And in order for you to be successful, you need to change. So don't just exist. To exist means you're not changing with the times for fear of failure is a potential or not wanting to change the status quo for fear of taking a risk and as a direct result, potential failure. 
Um, but we talk about this a lot where people want to exist or they refuse to take a risk because of fear of failure. And nothing great has ever happened without somebody failing first. So evolution is merely the evolution of all of these areas inside of a brand, these moving pieces, I call them. And the challenge that a brand will face and that you'll face on the evolution side of it is you may have some pieces that move and some that evolve like product, like marketing. And then you may have some areas inside of your company. I'm sure you've seen it. You've got legacy systems, you've got legacy processes, and you have an adapter move to how you're engaging with your new core community audience. And those are really deficiencies and that's an exist segment of your company. So make sure when you're doing an audit of your company on are we truly evolving over time? Are we continually dynamically developing over time and taking something that's simple and making it a more complex form, but simple sophistication is the key to it, meaning that get people to adapt to it, get people to sign into it, get people to approve of it. So make sure that everybody knows this is coming. And I'm talking specifically about processes, procedural improvements, operation, logistics, whatever it may be. So they know it's coming. You don't necessarily need to do that with product and with marketing. Product touches a lot of different areas. Marketing also touches many areas, but those are controllable and those can evolve and can be continual and dynamic evolution. So when you look at this customer engagement, fulfillment, and, and messaging segments that not a lot of people talk about, but those are really the areas beyond product marketing and sales, which are the power triad that we talk about. There are new areas that you need to evolve and you need to adapt, which is those areas. And a lot of people either don't know how to do it, don't want to do it, or merely want to stay the status quo. And none of those are going to allow you to be a generational visionary brand. So when we looked at this, we said, okay, what do brands need to do in order to evolve? And I came up with a couple points here that um, in the following are, are good foundational, what I call anchors continually to continually adapt in the marketplace to what I call evolve and not stay static or just exist. And these are somewhat unusual. They're not the ones that people again focus on, but I think these are the ones being that they don't traditionally focus on them, the brands that I work with, with Liquid Mind, or the brands that I've been with, these aren't the areas that people focus on necessarily. And again, you will focus on product, marketing, and sales, because those are the most predominant, most prevalent, and most engaged part of your brand in your company, and most people will just focus on those. But I'm going to focus on some other areas you need to take a look at as well. The first is messaging. And this obviously falls underneath marketing's area of responsibility, um, but you need to adapt here and make sure that whatever messaging you are, uh, have, we know from an anchoring standpoint, we've positioned our brand as premium, and we've also engaged a certain way. We've had our social media playbook. How do we engage with people? Um, how do we post? And if so, what do we post? What are the social media sites that we are managing? And are we overseeing those sites? And that's a strategy around marketing and social media and digital marketing. But there's also the messaging component of it is you need to make sure that you're engaging and respecting your community along the way. And what I mean by that is that as you adapt and evolve, make sure that you understand your community and what their expectations are of you as a brand when you message them. And so whether this be brand engagement or messaging through your social, com social community or campaigns, anything that you do from a point of purchase perspective, the messaging is key to the positioning of your brand but also the evolution of your brand and how you position it. You always stay anchored in premium and you also stay stank anchored to the vision of what the brand is. That never changes, but it evolves over time. So you want to make sure that this takes the form of the brand, 
product or a persona on your messaging. So you can message against your brand, your product, or a persona of who people think the company is. We go back to Ralph Lauren where he said, hey, we're selling a lifestyle, not a product. So you want to make sure that it does change with the times. When you talk about that on messaging, on your social media posts, that everybody understands what your playbook is, the playbook evolves, and everybody understands the message and the voice vertically, starting with the foundational principles of your brand and the vision for what the brand is, what you do, how you do it, and where you do it. And that all evolves and it has to be translated into your messaging. So make sure you're careful in this area, and not a lot of people talk about it, but I think it's extremely important when you start talking about messaging and making sure you're adapting and that you're evolving your messaging and you don't just exist. And this is a crucial one. If you just exist on your messaging and never adapt or evolve, culturally, your brand's going to suffer. So make sure that you're adapting. The second thing is, the more logical one is product. Now, now this one may seem logical, but you might be very surprised in all the brands that I've worked with that many brands don't update or adapt their product portfolio relative to consumer needs. And this can take the form of a one hit wonder product that's done extremely well and why change something that's working before it's too late. So that's one thing I say is that many times what happens is they're a victim of their success they stay static, and as a result, they fade away, never to be seen again. And these are the one-hit wonders, the ones that don't want to take a chance, don't want to take a risk on a product. They move that product along the life cycle. Supply is short. Demand is high on the front end. The back end, they've got an oversupply with no demand, and the product goes away, as does, does the business in many instances. So... Making sure that you adapt and evolve your product and find a way to get breakaway technologies that we talk about many times that on the front end is your anchor for innovation that allows you to move products along the supply and demand chain. So product is one to make sure, very important, that you evolve, not just exist there as well. The third that some people talk about, but we don't talk about enough, is culture. And culture must be consistent with the messaging, the positioning of the brand itself. But it must also adapt in order to provide inclusive versus exclusive environment. Your culture is what allows you to retain those with a passion for your brand, product, and community. This is how you build a loyal base of followers and a community that can last generations. But as we know, generations are different. There's a reason they call us baby boomers, millennials, and the next generation will be called something different. But as you've seen, each one of these generations has a different culture attached to them, how they engage, how they talk how they message through their social media, how they message on a day-to-day basis, and the culture that they're comfortable with, that they want to be a part of, and one that adapts with them. So you've got a multi-generational company, meaning that you've got people that maybe the baby boomer culture, and they're all blended together. So culture is a very tricky one. But that's why we say, always look at your culture. You've got an anchoring principle for your culture as a brand. Make sure you understand those that are engaging with your brand and how to best build a culture that continues to engage them with a passion, generation to generation. The fourth is, more of an operational thing, which again, many times brands forget about, which is systems and processes. And I always say, ensure you're always providing the best tools to allow your team to succeed. And this may be a simple statement, but it's very powerful because if you're not providing the processes, the proper processes, as well as the systems and tools, 
for your team to be efficient, to allow them to get better in their roles, to be able to train others that are either coming into the company or jumping into another role inside of your company, you will stagnate as a brand and as a company. And you can, again, in, in, in this past year, really gave us a anchoring around what a great brand does and what an average brand does. And all of this came through not the marketing component, not necessarily even the product creation component, but it came through how do you properly fulfill product? How do you properly engage with your customers? How do you properly ensure that the product is arriving on time through the proper sourcing, logistics chain? All of these things can break down unless you have a system that's adapting to the environment that you're in. So make sure you implement, adopt each of these crucial pieces to successfully navigate the course that's laid ahead of you. And that course can change very quickly. And if the last year wasn't any barometer or litmus test of a course changing, almost immediately nothing is. So again, to kind of reiterate the four areas that we said on evolution, continue to evolve, not just exist as a brand. Messaging is the first one. Make sure that you're messering, adapting and, and evolving your messaging, your culture, and also the product and the systems and processes that your company has. And last, I'll say that evolution is a key factor to ensuring your brand remains healthy. And there are a lot of areas to ensuring that your brand remains healthy. It's very similar to the human body. Can you imagine just working out your right arm and not the rest of your body? You need to have everything working out at the same time in order to have proper balance. And so make sure that when you're looking at the evolution of your brand, that you have the right tools in place, the processes, the systems to ensure your team can succeed. The culture is a continual evolutionary process. The product from not only the ideation platform, but also the fulfillment side of it, and then messaging. So all of these are a continual evolution. So make sure that you're doing that with your brand and your company. And I can assure you of two things. If you are continually evolving and adapting, you will succeed. And if you are remaining static with your brand, you'll inevitably fail. And so I say evolve, adapt, and succeed. I want to thank you for listening to the Visionary Chronicles. I really appreciate your time. I know that you've got a lot of other things on your plate, and I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to listen to the Visionary Chronicles, so thank you. Um, you know, our intent in creating the Visionary Chronicles was really to address not only critical business issues, but also personal plus, plus professional issues that business owners, entrepreneurs face on a day-to-day -day basis, so... Um, if you could and you like what you hear, certainly the support helps and the reviews are tremendous. So we really appreciate all those of you who have given us reviews. And as we move forward and you give us a review, we're going to be giving away some product um, as a thank you for those reviews and uh, also take a look at the visionary interviews, uh, visionary chronicles interviews that we have coming up as well. So if you have somebody who you feel would be a good subject for the Visionary Chronicles, we'd appreciate you having them reach out to us as well. They can go to uh, my site, Brian Smeltzer, B-R-Y-A-N-S-M-E-L-T-Z-E-R.com. Uh, go to the podcast section and you'll see the Visionary interview. So again, thank you for your time. I appreciate it as always and look forward to our next Visionary Chronicles podcast.